Hello and welcome to the Inspiring Income Facebook page and the Inspiring Income YouTube channel. I'm Amanda Fowler. It's Tuesday at two o'clock and time for this week's Craft and Chat. If you are watching live, can you let me know if the sound and light is okay? And if you're watching the replay, thank you so much for doing that. 20 minutes or so of chatting might be a bit longer today. <laughs> We have lots of things to chat about and um, then I will get on with some crafting and it's going to be some a storage solution for you today. Um, but yeah, new colours to show you, exciting things happening, so much, <laughs> so much to talk to you about. I've got to check, lipstick, <laughs> no, we're all okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things you put lipstick on and then you worry that it's all over your teeth <gasps> hello elizabeth loud 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 and sound no light and sound is good thank you hi ali thanks for joining us and anne it's breezy and sunny in suffolk says anne yeah actually it's really sunny here i was out um earlier on this morning um, I didn't have a coat on. That was fine. And Chris and Angela are in Newbury. Gail saying good morning. That means, Gail, you are somewhere else in the world. You're not in Europe if it's good morning. So let us know where you're from. Paul. Ciao, Paul. He's in Italy. Sunny. Wish I was there too, actually. That'd be lovely. Brilliant. So, um, it's been two weeks because I wasn't here last week. I was on my holidays. More about that later. Um, so tell me what you did. We had the long Easter weekend. Um, let me know what you got up to. Did you go out and about? Did you get to see family and friends? Yummy food. Did you stay at home and chill? <laughs> did you get too much chocolate? Did you eat too much chocolate? I don't know why I said, did you get too much chocolate? I, I, I don't think there's a world in which too much chocolate is a real thing. But did you eat too much chocolate? Um, yeah. So let me know in the comments what you've what you've been doing. And I'll catch you up with my world. Which... You probably won't be that surprised to know it's a bit crackers. <laughs> I was thinking this morning when I was I was um, driving into the village to um, uh, drop some parcels off and thinking, what are we going to talk about today? And I thought, well, do you know what? Maybe I should just tell you what I've been up to in the two weeks that I've been gone. We We had a bit of a break. And I came home for a rest <laughs> and I didn't get one because the world of stamping up has gone crackers. So let's have a look. Let's see who else. Um, so Gail's in NY. So I'm guessing that's New York. Um, good afternoon, mum. Pauline's here. <laughs> Heidi Ho, Valerie. <laughs> that's made me smile. Valerie's in Hollywood, Florida. Good afternoon, Michelle. Oh, Anne was in Belgium over Easter. Lots of yummy Belgian chocolates. Oh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth went to see family and caught COVID. I hope that you recover very quickly, Elizabeth. Um, there is actually a lot of it about at the moment. Um, yeah, it's definitely not gone away. Um, but, um, yeah, there's quite a few people that I've, um, heard from recently that have had COVID. Hello, Janet. Hello, Jan. Yeah, Gail's in central New York. That's a city and a state, New York, New York. Um, I haven't been to yet, so it's on my list. So... Let's catch, let's catch you up with, with what's going on. 
Um, so <laughs> Brian and I, before Easter, went to Kimberley and Dom's house in Manchester, um, obviously to visit, but also um, to be an extra couple of sets of hands for some DIY jobs that needed doing. Um, we worked hard. <laughs> <laughs> lots of lots of DIY, lots of lights changing and decorating and car stuff and I don't know, painting, gardening, pruning, just kind of, you know, just lots of, of stuff to do. Um, so <laughs> we were busy. Um and then on Easter Sunday, Sunday, uh, Connor and Lydia came over. Um, so I got to see both my babies, which was brilliant. Um, and yeah, we had a lovely family dinner and that was that was just really nice to kind of hang out with them. Um, then we went over to see Brian's mum and dad. <laughs> More DIY. <laughs> it's the story of our lives, I think. Um, yeah, more DIY, more more sorting and helping and, you know, stuff. Um, and then we came home for a rest. <laughs> yeah, and then we started on our upstairs bathroom. So there wasn't really a rest. Um, but the bits and pieces that we needed to do there, we've pretty much done now. Um, but the world of stamping up in that week went a bit crackers. Now, if you're on my mailing list, you will know this already. Um, but we have globally, so for my international friends, this is affecting everybody, we had our biggest sales day ever in the history of 35 years of the company on the 4th of April, which is pretty awesome in the sense of there's a lot of orders. Sadly, the warehouses, <laughs> they just, yeah, they, they can't process that many orders. Um, so they are working double shifts. They are doing overtime, they're working weekends, and this is in all the markets. So whether you're in North America, South Pacific, or in Europe, um, all of the warehouses are running eight to 10, even 12 in some areas, days behind. Um, to put it into context, they received 20 times the amount of orders in one day that they would ever get. So yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, so I came back <laughs> to that um, and lots of customers and team and, and so on um, wanting to know where their orders were and, and I've been sorting all that out and kind of trying to keep on top of it and so on. And then my email service decided to stop sending emails to people with BT internet email addresses. That took me a while to get sorted out. It's all fixed now. And actually, oh, sorry. Um, and actually it, it hasn't affected my customers as much as it's affected the team, but I have fixed it. So, so we've sorted out that. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then yesterday, Stamping Up announced that there was going to be free shipping tomorrow. I know I love free shipping and I know you love free shipping. Um, but obviously the warehouse is already behind um so we're just gonna have to be patient with our goodies so if you want to place an order tomorrow with the free shipping it has to be 60 pounds um to get the free shipping 
Um, and there are still lots of last chance stuff and discounts and so on to, to get hold of. So there's there's plenty of product. Um, yeah, just just be patient. Um, things are beginning to move faster now. So um, I checked just before I came on air and um, in Europe, and obviously I can only see my customers' orders. I can't see everybody's orders, but um, orders from the 5th of April. So they've cleared the 4th of April and orders from the 5th of April are beginning to ship now. So um, what will happen is because the number of orders will be smaller on those subsequent days, they will pick up pace. So hopefully things will will move and I'm keeping an eye on it and tracking so every morning cup of coffee <laughs> onto the UPS website um, to track all your orders so I know where everyone's order is currently um, and I'm keeping an eye on it so yeah I want to know if it's the weekend yet because because <laughs> it's crazy and my catalogs aren't here yet so I can't send my catalogs out either. Hopefully they will be here by the end of the week. Um, yeah. So if anyone's got any extra hours in the day, I would be really grateful. That would be really good. So let's have a look. Let's have a look. Chris, oh, oh my word. Chris went to Scotland to see family on her dad's side in various towns, drove 1,552 miles through all types of weather and sat in a few traffic jams. Yeah, Easter weekend and traffic is just crazy. Did you have the crazy storms, Chris? Um, we were on the... On Easter Monday, we were traveling from Manchester back to Nottingham and the the rain was horrendous. I mean, to the point of you, you couldn't see, you know, like six foot in front of you. Um, good evening, Donna. Hi, Anita. Stella's here from Texas. Hello, hello. Gail went to her daughter's house after church and had a beautiful brunch. That sounds marvellous. And Kathy Jean's here from Alberta in Canada. Claire is hello from sunny Sheffield. Hooray for free shipping. I know. It's just so exciting. Um, yeah, because I've got stuff on my list that I hadn't ordered. <laughs> it's now on my list, ready to go. Um, Jill is saying it's cloudy here in Ohio. Hope it's sunny here. Yeah, it is actually. And fairly warm. Yeah, so Julie's saying, so Julie's in the States and orders are taking about two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So so when we talk about eight to ten days or twelve days, they're business days. Um, so a couple of weeks is, is yeah. Um, so Julie, they they actually started shipping from the fifth. So that's 13 days ago. <laughs> North Carolina is here. Gordy is here. Awesome. So, yeah, it's all a bit of a pain because the stuff's not coming as quick as we need it. Um, but it's coming. So that's good. And I'm very excited about the new stuff. Very excited about the new stuff. Um, I'm very sad because so many of my favorite stamps are going. Like... I've got to take my glasses off, put my head in my hands. Three quarters of my stamps <laughs> have left the catalogue. And I knew this would happen because the last two or three catalogues, everything stayed. And I only lost like three stamp sets. So I knew I was due a kind of massive clear out. And actually, it's really nice because then I get 
I go and get lots of new stamps. But I was planning, so I was I've been planning my in-person card class, which is in a couple of weeks. And because Easter's happened, we make a Christmas card <laughs> every month. Um, I don't know whether everyone coming to card class knows this. But that's what we do. Um, and expect to see right here <laughs> Christmas cards. It's never too early to start your Christmas cards. Um, but I actually don't have a single Merry Christmas stamp left. I don't have. I have one Christmas stamp, which is my big snowflake, but no Merry Christmas, no Happy Christmas, no season's greetings, nothing. So that's what's going on my list tomorrow. Scary stuff. How, how, how can I not have any Christmas stamps? But there we go. Uh, oh, Chris was away for nearly two weeks. She saw all sorts of weather. Was on the west coast for strong winds and the north when the mountains got a load of snow. But wonderful sunshine in between. Yeah, Scotland's one of my favourite places. And it absolutely is a country where you can have all different kinds of weather in the same day. It, it can be a bit crazy, particularly in the Highlands. Um, yeah, you can get gorgeous sun, sun and then the fog will come down and then it will rain and then it will be windy and, yeah, crazy. Okay, so... I have something to show you that I prom that I forgot to show you last time. I have finished my cardigan. So I don't know how I'm going to be able to show it to you, really. It's on my, ooh, it's on my chair. Now, Brian, <laughs> bless his cotton socks, says it looks like I'm wearing a blanket. He's not wrong. Um, okay. So let me put it on. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Right. Okay. So, ooh. so I will model it as, as best as I can. So on the, I've got these lovely little holes here, and it's. Ooh, let me move there. I've done little sleeves. And, oh, I'll stand up. Let me move the chair. See what else I can show you. So, da, da, da. can you see? So it, it's, it just covers, covers my bum. Um, but it's, it's really nice and it's really snuggly. There are a few issues. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, the first is where the sleeves are means that actually it's quite difficult for me to work. So my theory was that I'd stick it on the back of my chair at work in my office um, when I was a bit chilly. But because, <laughs> because of where the sleeves are, there's not very much movement. So, and, and the other thing is it also doesn't fasten. So I've got this. Now this looks like a really dodgy implement. It's, it's made of wood and it's from a company called Nitpicks and it's a shawl pin. But if I show you, so what you can do is you stab it don't stab yourself, obviously, but you stab it through like that and it holds it. So for any of you that crochet shawls or blankets or everything, um, it works really, really well. Um, it's Yeah, it's really cool. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it, I love it. But if I ever make another one, I will kind of tweak it. So there you go. But yeah, so so these are, are really cool. Now you can get different ones. There are some with like a circle that you kind of weave it in. 
but yeah but it's really cool but it's so cuddly and snuggly and yeah <laughs> it's like wearing wearing a blanket so there we go i'll see if i can actually put a picture up i don't know how i'm going to do that but maybe i'll get brian to take a picture of me in it <laughs> so yeah but but i love my i love my stick so that's good so there we go. So that's the first thing. Claire's saying she loves the colours. Anita's saying that looks snuggly. Oh, let's see. Cozy. Yeah, wonderful. Oh, Gordy. So that's how you found me. So because I did crochet, um, we did a crochet scarf. And I promise, I promise, I promise there is more crochet coming. Um, I've got like a a little set of things that um you're going to be able to crochet and i haven't figured out how i'm going to do it <laughs> do it yet but i've just got to i've got to do the second crochet through of one of the projects and finish a third and then yeah so it's coming it's probably realistically it's going to be the summer but actually, these are small pieces, so it's not it's not like a difficult thing to do in the summer, and they will make great Christmas presents. So I might kind of, <laughs> will that work for you all? I know I've been promising, but it's, yeah, I have to concentrate on what I'm supposed to be doing, which is stamping. <laughs> distracted with the crochet right claire's loving the colors awesome thank you Anne and donna and jan okay so crochet to one side so let's talk about the new colors now if you have all if you placed an order with me in march you will have seen the new in colors already this is why you need to place your orders with me, because I send treats in the post. Um, so talking of treats, <laughs> craft alongs next week. I emailed everybody and I put a great big notice on the craft along packs. Don't eat the chocolate. It's amazing how many emails that I got to say, for well, really? Can I not eat it? You can eat it after Tuesday. Can't eat it now because <laughs> we need it. Um, we need it for one of the projects. You need it for the sizing and, and stuff. So please don't eat it. Um, but in your kit, you may or may not have seen it. But you will have received one of these. Oh, come on. Come on. Focus on that camera does not want to focus today. Hmm. Cover my face over, see if it'll... Yeah, that's better. So, some days it just does not want to focus. So, obviously we've got a colour refresh. So, there are multiple, <laughs> multiple things going on. So we've got 11 new colours or returning colours. So some colours you will have seen before, like Misty Moonlight. And next week, I'm going to go through those colours with you. Um, because it, it's there, there's so many, there's, there's so many things to talk about. So next week, I'll go through those colours. But this week, I want to talk to you about the in colours, the, the, the ones that are starting. Yeah, there we go. Uh, the ones that are starting in May. So there are, with in colours, there are always five. And these are they. And so, like I said, if you placed an order with me, you will have this in your pack. 
Um, so if you chose the craft along kit, you will um, have it in your pack. If you chose to have a card and a gift, it's it's in the post with that. So the five colors are copper clay, wild wheat, boho blue, moody mauve, and pebbled pass. And <laughs> it doesn't seem to matter which word I use to describe these colors. It sounds rubbish. <laughs> So to me, these colours are muddy or sludgy colours. And that sounds bad. It's not bad. It's really not bad. But they are muted tones. They are deep tones. And we don't have anything like them in the catalogue at all at the moment, which is why they're there. But more importantly than that, these colours are colours that you are going to see everywhere over the next 12 to 18 months. Anne, you see, I knew somebody would save me. Earth colours, says Anne. Thank you, Anne. You know, I just, I just say it as I see it. <laughs> But earth colours is a really good description. But you're going to see these tones coming in home decor, in clothing, soft furnishings, everything. You're going to see them everywhere. So don't be surprised to, to see them. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm just going to talk you through the colours. And it won't surprise you to know which is my favourite. Mm, there's a blue there. Actually, probably the grey is my favourite. So that's that's kind of interesting. So let me let me switch the camera round and let's walk you through. Ah, uh, that one. Do, do, do. Start the camera. Yes. Let me move. Let me have a slurp of tea first, and then I'll move my tea out of the way. Okay, so these are the colours. I had lots of fun making these. So this is like a little bookmark. This is um, the new textured ribbon and it comes in all four colours. So this is, so it's boho blue and I, I got my stamping up stapler out to staple the ribbon to the, to the bookmarks. Um, yeah, which is, is very cool. So here you've got like a squiggle of the marker, and I'm going to talk to you about the markers in a minute, a squiggle of the marker and a stamped a stamped image. And then this is the cardstock. So let me just put them in order that they are on here. So that's copper clay. And that's, that's to me, a real terracotta -y color wild wheat which is a really deep deep yellow boho blue or which clearly i love because it's blue moody mauve and then pebbled pass and it's it's this one that i think is probably my favorite color um it's it's perhaps more of a taupe than a grey. Um, so it's kind of a grey that's got brown in it. Um, but I wanted to show you. So if you just take boho blue and you look at it and you think, well, you know, that's that's kind of similar to balmy blue, which is the pale blue that we have. But when you actually put them together, you can see that this is kind of more on the purpley side. And it, yeah, it, it's really interesting. And next week, when I show you the new colors, um, you'll see 
the the kind of difference it's really really interesting so what what are we thinking about these new earth tones that Anne has now named for us what are we thinking what are we thinking about them and those of you that have seen them in the flash what do you think those of you that are watching this on the screen and I know it can kind of be tricky on the screen um, because every everyone's color monitor is different and people set their color monitors up differently as well. And I don't know. Did you know this? You can change the settings on your on your monitors often. So you can have it like warm tones or cool tones, um, all sorts of things. Um, good afternoon, Lorraine. Donna saying these are nice. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just going to pop those to one side for a minute. These are the new and returning colours. I will, like I said, I'm going to show you them next week. Because we've got a couple of weeks yet until the new catalogue goes live. So it's it's not crazy. But I wanted to show you that the markers have changed. Now, I guess it would really help... If I got an old marker, hold on. There we go. Right, I'll put those to one side. So Chris is saying that she's really looking forward to putting these two together for neutral tones. And absolutely, absolutely, I think that's going to be awesome. Right, so let's just talk about these new markers. So this is the new style marker. And on first glance, it looks very similar to the old one. So um, the caps, the, the marker size is exactly the same, but the caps on the new one are smaller. They've both got the thin line and the thick line to denote um, whether it's the brush tip or the fine tip. But the difference or the two differences, the brush tip is, this is the new one, the brush tip is new and improved. It doesn't have the coloured bit here, it's just black. Okay, so that's different. And then the other difference, which is why I'm so excited, is we've gone from a fine tip marker to a bullet marker. So let me let me see if I can get some card. So this is this is the bullet tip. And it's, it's hard, which is really cool. This, it's a different colour, but you can see it, it is much finer. But if you just go very gently with this, you can get a finer line. But equally, you can get a fat line as well. Um. The marker lids still, ooh, she says, still stack one on top of another, which is really cool. Um, they still have the central reservation for the ink. So you store all of our markers lying down. Don't store the markers on their end because all that happens is whichever end is at the top, it will dry out because all the ink will sink to the bottom. So always store the markers lying down. Um, so obviously, there's no need to replace your existing markers if your markers are still working. But I just wanted to let you know that when you do start getting new markers, um, that uh, this th those are the changes. Okay, so that's the markers. So let's go back to our awesome in colours. 
Oh, we've got a couple of grumpy faces on the Facebook page. I don't know why somebody's grumpy. I know sometimes, <laughs> sometimes uh, people press the wrong, the wrong emoji con. Uh, Claire is asking if the new markers bullet tip end is suitable for handwriting still. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Ta da. Okay. So back to the new colors. So, do we have a favorite of these new colors? Is that there? <laughs> How did I know, Jan, that you were going to say blue? Because you're just like me. You love blue the best. Um, so we have got new style of colored patterned paper. So these are six by six. And these are the four patterns. So you've got little hearts and dashes and polka dots and stripes. And you can see that they're kind of, um, that's like a painted line. So it's it's a bit wibbly. Um, you've got the same with the hearts. You've got kind of little additional bits with the hearts. And again, this these lines look look painted on. So in all of the colors, so all of the new color families um, will have these patterned papers. Um, but you're going to see quite a lot of this because I just, I just think these are so easy to use with your card making because they're just... Um, kind of neutral patterns and even the hearts. I mean, I know sometimes we talk about, um, you know, being overly sentimental or whatever, but I just really like this. Hi, Joanne and Anne. How are you doing, lovely ladies? You're obviously up, you're obviously together. Hope you're not causing mischief. Or maybe you are. <laughs> so I am, for this project, going to use the polka dots and the um, boho blue. Now I will make sure that all of the measurements for the project that I'm going to make are on my blog um and the link will be down there down there i don't know um it will be below the video anyway so whether you're on youtube or facebook or on my blog it will be at the bottom um so i'm gonna open my new pack Ta -ta -ta. Um, and let me show you what we're making. Now, some of you will have seen this before. Um, we did make uh, a version of this in a craft along a little while ago. But I'm on a storage kick at the moment because we, we all need to tidy up our craft rooms. <laughs> we really do because, you know, how can you put new stuff in it if it's not tidy? So I'm all about the storage at the moment. So this is what we're going to make. So let's start here. So this is a storage box for your six by six paper. So... You can just put your six by six paper in 
in there and just put lots in. But I've also designed a little, a little folder, file folder that is designed to fit a full one of our paper packs. So you can pop it in like that. Ooh, she says, pop it in like that. And then if you want to, you can label them here on the spines. Um, but it just coordinates in. Now you can get, I think, let me check the measurements actually. I am sure, oh, I'm saying check the measurements. Oh yeah, there's my ruler. I think it's six, but let me check. Yeah, you get six of these. Six of these in the pack. Okay, so let's get started. Now I designed this using A4 cardstock because I know not everybody has 12 by 12 cardstock. So um yeah. It just I just it just is a bit easier. So I'm gonna put my measurements up there. You probably won't be able to read them, they're not really very bold. But, like I said, all the measurements will be there later for the state of my trimmer. Okay, so we need a front and a base, which is nine and a half. And all of my measurements for this are in inches. Nine and a half by three and three quarters. So you get the front and the base. Ooh. Out of one sheet of card. And I know it's kind of gonna seem a bit weird, but no just ignore me let's start again so that's one piece that's one piece and you need two of those <gasps> honestly so you need that piece so it's the front and the base so it's this piece and that piece hang on this piece and that piece is this bit then we need a second piece that is 11 and a half by three and three quarters. So let's just, when I write these instructions again, I'm going to switch those around. That's to remind me to do that. Because you can get this out of one sheet of card. So that's the 11 and a half by three and a quarter, three and three quarters. So then you can cut from the rest of that, move all of that out of the way, three and three quarters by nine and a half. Okay, are you with me? So they're your two pieces. And the, the smaller piece is going to be scored at three inches. And I'll show it to you laid on the top so it's easy to see. So this is this piece that goes to there. Then this piece is scored at six and a half. So that piece is going to go there. And then this piece is... Ooh, is going to be the back and that goes underneath so let's flip it over can you see because obviously we ha it's not big enough here to go all the way so that's why that piece goes on the top 
I made that so hard. It's not hard. Right. So now we're going to make the side panels. That's these panels here. So you need, needs to be eight and a half by seven and a half. And you need two of those. So that's another two sheets of A4 card. So it is eight and a half by seven and a half. And then the scoring for both of them is with your eight and a half bit at the top, you're going to score one inch from each side and the bottom. So I'm going to score it at one inch on one side, one inch from the bottom. So you're doing like a U shape and one inch from the other side. Okay, so that piece is going to make that side panel. And we're going to do the same. So make sure your eight and a half is at the top. So you're going to do a one inch score from the side. One inch score from the bottom. Oop. One inch score from the other side. Okay, so we need in the patterned paper department, uh, we need two sheets. What did I do with my polka dots? Two sheets of six by six, and one sheet that is three and a quarter by two and a half. Okay. And then I'll I will come back once we've made the main box and then I'll show you how to make these, okay? So Just get my scissors. So we're going to cut up from the bottom on these score lines and I'm just going to trim these very slightly. And trim your squares a little bit as well. Now obviously we're making something 3D so I'm always going to say get your bone folder out and reinforce those score lines it just it gives you a crisper edge it helps the cardstock understand what it is that you're trying to sell it to do i just think it looks smarter and it doesn't actually matter whether you do it before or after you cut it so now we're going to do exactly the same with this one Okay, and then we've got the same for these. Now, there are multiple ways in which you can assemble this. Um, because basically, this short piece is the front and this long piece is the back. So... The first thing I recommend that you do really is stick these two pieces together. 
So make sure that um, this is the nine and a half inch piece that your small piece is here at the front and you want to put glue on this smaller tab. And this score line needs to line up with that edge and you are going to pop that down and you need it to line up both edges and this side. And the reason that you want the longer bit here is so that you've got a nice smooth bottom. Now you can use some of your leftover card to put reinforcement in here. And I'll show you that in a minute. Um, I've actually put some on the side, uh, sorry, on the back and here. Depends how much cardstock you're going to put in it. So then these pieces are going to stick here, like so. And then this is going to wrap around. Does that make sense? So what I would do is make these boxes next. Well, they're, they're kind of half boxes, aren't they? So if you fold up the sides and make it so it's a nice square corner. And I've glued the tabs on the outside. When this goes in and this wraps up, you'll be able to see how well it sits. Are you still with me? I hope so. So I'm just going to glue that bit. Okay, so on mine, you can see that I've got a diagonal running here. So we will need to cut this. We're going to have to cut the whole diagonal piece off. So the easiest way to, to figure out what you're going to do is to position this here. So you can see where it's got to go from and just make a little pencil mark. And just do it on both sides. And then you can either use your scissors, um, get a ruler, use your scissors to, to draw it. Now, Obviously, I don't know what I've done with my ruler now. Obviously, had I not glued it together, cutting it would have been easier. But there you go. That's what I've done. So that's fine. So I'm just going to draw a really soft pencil line there. Get my big scissors out. And cut. So I'm going to cut on the diagonal to where the score line is. And then I'm going to cut straight. Because that bit there needs to be straight. So I'm just going to do the same with this one. So from there. Oop. And just make sure you've got one side, <laughs> one each side. You don't want two with the, the cut line on that side. So I've cut straight across and then I'm going this way. Oh, 
Okay. So you can see I've got patterned paper here and it's cut to the right size. So this is, this is my top tip whenever you're cutting a diagonal layer. What you need to do is position the, the paper so it's got the correct border to the left, to the bottom and to the right. Can you see that? And then what you do is you lift the paper so that the bottom is twice the height of the left and the right. And then if you just flip this over, you can just cut it and it will give you exactly the right angle that you need when it's stuck down. So we could actually stick that down now. And I'll show you again on the second piece. Of course, you don't have to put patterned paper on. You could have stamped this. Obviously, you need to stamp it before you assemble it. Um, but you could stamp it. That would work as well. So let's just decorate this side again. So make your border even. Right and left and the bottom, then lift it up so the bottom bit is twice the height and then cut it off. Ooh, don't wiggle it as you're cutting. And I can just see my pencil line there. So let me just get my eraser and just get rid of that pencil line. Okay. So our two side panels are done. Let's get this piece. And we're going to pop it in. So the easiest way to do it is to get glue on these pieces if you put glue on this bit and it goes out too far you'll end up with glue everywhere so you're going to put glue on here and if you if you use double-sided tape that's absolutely fine i wouldn't use a tape runner on this because you want something that's that's strong as you guys know tombow is my favorite glue and it, it's just so strong but it gives us a bit of wiggle room when we're starting out. Let's move that out of the way. So I'm going to position this on the base and I want to make sure I'll tilt it this <laughs> tilt it this way so you can see. I want to make sure that this edge and this edge are lined up. So that's that's in position there. And then I'm going to lift up this piece and make sure it's lined up. You might have to do some minor adjustments in a second, but that's fine. And lift up this piece like so. Now you can see there's a tiny overlap there. So I'm just going to trim that off. So obviously my pencil line, I didn't quite cut it perfectly, but it's okay. We've done that. So now we're going to do the other piece. Now the other piece will just slot in. So what we need to do, let me just check that because that, that's going to be okay. So we're going to put the glue in exactly the same place on all three sides. Yeah. Thank you. 
<laughs> Yay. Julie's saying she loves this because she can customize her crafting space with her Stampin' Up colors. Exactly. You can do it with all your favorite colors. All right. So just pull this around and line it up. There we go. And I do just need to do that a little tiny bit. Tidy that up just a smidge. And there we go. So that is, ooh, let me just squash that down. There we go. That is the basic box itself. Now, with your scrap, pop them in to sort of layer up the piece so um, you strengthen the, the back and the sides. So can you see here, we've actually got the back piece and then the two side panels to smarten it up, um, but also to strengthen it. If you just put in an additional piece there and in the base, and in there, that will work. So I'm not going to give you measurements for these because just use the scraps that are kind of left over and just trim them to fit. So that's that one. I've got another bit. So all I'm doing, look, is just kind of working out where it needs to, to be cut. And I'm just trimming it. So it's not perfect. Nobody's ever going to see the inside, but you're just giving it a little bit of extra strength. So let's pop that down. And then I've got a little bit left there, look. So I'm just going to use that bit on the front. There we go. And then we've just got that panel there to go on the front as well. Now, ooh. Just needs a snip as well. There we go. Just a tiny tidy up. So there is the main box. And like I said, it's it, it's quite sturdy. But let's make an insert as well. So let me just get where's the pebble gone? since we like this colour. Um, so you can get two um, out, of, out of this A4 sheet. So you want to cut it at seven and a quarter. And then you want two pieces that are five and three quarters. Okay, so you just need one sheet of cardstock to make the storage. Um, so with the seven and a quarter at the top, we're going to score at half an inch on each side and the bottom. So a U shape again, exactly the same as these side panels. So you're going to score at half an inch on all on three sides from the long side and the two short sides.
okay and what that does it, this measurement here will then be six and a quarter so is it when you've got six by six paper it's just got a little bit of wriggle room And the way you're going to make this, let's let's reinforce all the score lines with the bone folder again. Um, the way you're going to make this is exactly the same. You're just going to put the two, you're just going to stick the two side panels together. So again. What we're going to do is we're going to cut one the same as we did last time. So you're going to cut up from the bottom and trim these little bits like so. Trim that and that. And then on the second one, it's going to be the outer wrap. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to cut the corners out. And I'll show you. It will make sense in a second. So we're going to fold this one. So that the corners go on the outside of it. And that's exactly the same as we did um, for the for the main body of the box, as it were. Like so. Just make sure your corner's nice and tight and square. Put glue all over my fingers again. And then this piece is going to go over the top. Like so. And it's going to cover those glued bits. So if I show you on this one, it's square here. There's, you can't see the additional folds. So you're going to put glue on all three sides. Do -do. I'm going to pop that in and then I'm just going to fold these in. So again, they're nice and tight. On all three sides. So you've got double thickness of cardstock at the base and the sides on these. So just, just take a minute, just kind of press it down. Ooh. <laughs> you can get your hand in, um, but I tend to use my bone folder and just kind of press it down or use a pencil, something like that. And then it's done. So as you can see, it's a perfect fit to go in there. There's the second one. There's the third one. But obviously, like I said, you can actually fit six in there, like that. Isn't that cool. So there you go. So there is a storage solution for you um, using the new the new in colours. And you can fit six of your uh, Stampin' Up six by six paper packs. And like I said, you know, you can just write um, names on them here. Or if you've got a label maker, you could label them. Um, that will work really, really well as well. So you can see at a glance what you have got. Okay, so I'll just leave, leave those two bits there. Um, 
Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Um, please know that everything that you've seen today can be purchased in my online store. If you pop over to my blog, which is www.inspiringinkin.com, um, you'll see a shop now link and lots more creative inspiration. Um, lots of tutorials and videos there as well for you. Tonight, which is the 18th of April at 11 p.m. UK time, free shipping goes live. It's live for 24 hours. It will finish at 5 to 11 p.m. tomorrow, which is a Wednesday, the 19th of April. Obviously, if you're watching this on the replay, um, you will need um, to check the dates. Um, in case uh, the free shipping has ended. Um, free shipping is available for all orders that are £60 and over. And that level of order will also qualify for my May craft along um, or a free thank you card and product gift from me. Um, there is a host code to use. And probably, let me just see, let me just add, do, 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 do. Um, no, actually, I can just leave that there. So the on inspiringinkin.com, if you don't get emails from me, um, pop over there as well and get your name and email address on my newsletter email list. Um, and then you'll always be first to know when there are special offers or I've got more tutorials for you. So let me just check out the comments before we go. Um, Thank you very much, Anne and Julie. Claire saying it looks good. Great. Thanks, Donna. Thank you, Chris and Jan and Michelle. Thank you so much. So I will see you all again next Tuesday. So next Tuesday, we're going to be looking at all of the, the 11 new and returning colours um, and checking them out to do with um, sort of comparing them to other colours and, and uh, investigating them, shall we say. Okay, so take care of yourselves till next week. I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.